Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Rebecca and myself, David Giles, we're Daedalus spinners. We make the electric spinning wheels. We've got some uh, guests with us here today. Uh, these are the people that we've sent some test sparrows out to, and they're going to have some feedback. Looks like everybody's got their sparrows humming along. Um, so the goal of this video today is just to talk about Sparrow, what it was designed for, what it's good at, what it's not good at, how it compares to the other wheels. And so we're just going to kind of cover all those topics in today's video. Um, so I'd like to introduce some of the people that we have here. I'm just, there is in no specific order. I'm going to go kind of in the top down. Evanita Montalvo, if you haven't heard of her, you should. She's a huge on Instagram. She has probably some of the most level bobbins that in the history of level and bobbins. Uh, <laughs> she's a very diverse spinner, a lot of fine work, uh, some heavier work. If you know her well, her favorite color is green. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Susie Brown, that's the wool witch. If you haven't heard of her, uh, she's probably our favorite Kiwi at this point, New Zealander. She's a uh, the, she owns and operates Tiny Studio Creative Life magazine. Uh, excellent periodical, comes out digitally. Uh, lots of good topics, uh, lots of good information. If you haven't seen her magazine, you should check it out. Uh, Susie is obviously known for heavier, uh, heavier art yarns, but that may just be her forte. She actually spins all gauges on all different types of wheels. Uh, all right, so next we have Debbie Held. She hails from Georgia, Atlanta, isn't yes. it? Yes, the, the, yep. The, 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 the big peach, is that what they call it? Um, Among other names, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Debbie's done a lot of writing. I know that she's written articles for Spinoff Magazine. Uh, she actually teaches for uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns, a lot of different classes. Um, so if you haven't heard of her, you should definitely check her out. Um, Jillian Marino, kind of in that same category. Jillian's known for uh, her wonderful classes that she teaches. Um, I know that she's written a lot of articles for Ply Magazine. And, uh, and you have a book, don't you, Jillian? I do, Yarnitecture. Yarnitecture, kind of like architecture, but with yarn. Exactly. So <laughs> if you guys want to check that out, look that up. Uh, Jillian's a wonderful teacher, and it's not just because she's knowledgeable in her in her area, she also has a gift to kind of the way that she brings it across to people. I know her classes are highly sought after and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Have I left anybody out? No, I haven't. James. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, him. <laughs> J James Longdraw Perry might not be as accredited, you know, but. Uh, oh, give it a break. Well, He's great. He is. He's, he's beautiful to look at, and that's that's why we've invited him here today. He might know some stuff about spinning yarn. If you don't know James Longdraw Perry, he's our favorite Brit now. Uh, he, uh, he's he been in this for a long time, even though he's young, and he specializes really with long draw techniques. The guy can draft so fast, I think he could feed a jet engine. Um, I've been working with James on some of the higher performance, higher speed designs that we have available now and coming out in the future. And uh, we've broken physics itself several times and working out all the details. So he's, he's, a, he's been one of my test spinners for a long time. And uh, welcome, James. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, Thanks, Dave. Let's get started. I see you guys are all spinning on your sparrows. So let me kind of talk about mine. I think I have one here. Um, <laughs> yeah. See this little guy? So this is Sparrow. This is the latest offering from Daedalus. It's the smallest, most compact wheel, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's slow or weak. It's uh, it's still high performance, uh, kind of like Daedalus does. Sorry about the mess of fiber stuffed inside of it. That's how I store my fiber <laughs> when it's not spinning on it. All right. So I say Sparrow is small. Um, I designed it to be the most portable or travel travelable wheel. Um, just because of its size format. It seems like most people were spinning lace and fingering and doing light plying anyway, even though they were buying bigger wheels that were capable of much, much more. And I said, well, you know, there's a large part of the market that just kind of fits in this category. And so here's the smallest package I can make a high performance wheel to do these jobs in. And that, that's how Sparrow was born. It only comes down at about 1.5 pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight our 
chart so everybody can oh, get great. a good look at it. Yeah, 1.5 pounds, 650 grams, um, six inches wide. That's actually the flyer width. If the flyer was horizontal, the frame is a little bit more narrow. Seven inches high by eight inches long. And again, that's 15 by 17 by 20 centimeters or centimeters if you're in France. Um, capacity of the bobbin. Bobbin capacity is kind of everybody does things differently. I wanted to make sure you could get an honest skein on it. And so I shot for about a five ounce capacity. And it seems like people are easily able to put that on a single. They can even ply four ounces on it easily and still have some room left over. And we have some users that are getting even more results than that. But just for honesty's sake, I just kind of want to call it a five ounce bobbin. Your mileage may vary a little bit. Five ounces is about 140 grams. The tension that this wheel can do is exactly like my other wheels. It can be in Scotch tension or it can be in Irish tension. If you're not familiar with those terms, um, Scotch tension is where the motor or your feet turn the flyer and the bobbin is what's resisted by the tension band. So they call it flyer lead. Irish is exactly the opposite. You can turn the motor around and drive the bobbin and move your tension system to the flyer. And that's called bobbin lead or Irish. Um, why use Irish or what's the difference? I mean, I could talk about Scotch and Irish forever, but generally speaking, you're going to find the lightest take up in Scotch. So for your finest singles, your fine laces, even into a fingering, you're going to prefer Scotch. If you do higher, higher gauges uh, or plying, you can turn the motor around and rig it up in Irish tension and it gives you more take up for jobs that require more take up. Um, okay, the, uh, the voltage that's required for these wheels is 15 volts, just like all my other wheels. They all come with wall power adapters for 15 volts. And uh, we do sell a battery too that has an adjustable output voltage that you set to 15 volts if you wanna be disconnected from the wall. Uh, the maximum RPM on this little wheel is a little over 2000 RPM. Most of them leave the factory here at about 2040, uh, at least. That's kind of how I try to gauge them in. And the orifice size on it is six millimeters, which is basically a quarter inch. And uh, the accessories are gonna come with the wheel. Now, of course, we're selling the wheel by itself for $400. That by, I say by itself, that means with no speed controller. Um, you cannot use the wheel without a speed controller. The reason I offer it for sale without a speed controller is because all the other owners of Starlings and Magpies that have the electronic speed control don't have to buy a second one. They can use their existing speed control and just purchase the wheel. If, if you're not in- One thing to add, if you are not sure which model you have, you either have a V1, which comes without any speed controller at all, you had to purchase a speed controller separate for that. You have a V2, which came automatically with a speed controller. It has no knob on the front to change the speed. This is the speed controller. And magpies obviously come with one in their face. So, uh, so the price of the speed controller is $110 by itself. So if you're not a previous owner and you're buying a Sparrow from scratch, and you need to purchase the Sparrow for 400 and the speed controller for 110. And that'll let you hit the ground running and start a, start spinning right away. The only accessories we offer right now, uh, bobbin three pack for $50. That's extra, the wheel comes with three bobbins. And so if you want extra three pack, that's an extra $50. Um, the battery is $110. And like I say, the controller's 110 and the wheel is 400. So hopefully that's got all of our prices pretty well uh, straightened out. We do have a small um, accessories uh, link that you can look at. It's got drive bands, hook tools, things like that. Um, you don't need any of that to begin with. These are things that you might wanna purchase later on. Yeah, it comes with everything that you're gonna need and a small spares kit as far as extra tension belt, extra spring, extra bearing, a couple of little things, everything you would need. All right, that pretty well covers Sparrow? I think so. I think I'm ready for some show and tell. What about you guys? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, so I see everybody spinning along on Sparrow and I don't hear a single one of them. That's kind of the, the beauty of the electric spinning wheel when it's done right. If they're nice and quiet, you can have a conversation, you can watch TV, um, just wonderful. So, so Evanita, what are you working on? Uh, I'm currently spinning on a bat that Becca made. 
Um, there you go. Cool. Thank you. Um, I just started this last night, so don't have a whole lot on here yet, but it's, it's going beautiful. Spinning Let out. Me show everybody what you've been doing, and you can talk to them a little bit about that. Cool beans. Okay, tell us about this. All right, so um, that was some unicorn fluff that I spun up. It is a uh, Polworth silk, and uh, it's only a little two ounce sampler. Um, and I have the, the finished skein as well. I spun that at 55%, um, which is, I mean, it's, it's fast, but uh, by no means is full speed. Um, and I'm, I'm spinning super fine on that. I got about a fingering weight yarn out of that three ply. You've been doing some cotton and what as well, haven't you? Yeah, the cotton has been incredible. So I, I'm not uh, a very adept cotton spinner and it just took off. It was just amazing. I'm spinning at 70% for the cotton and uh, it's it's been a blast. Um, I've got about 50 grams on the bobbin right there. And That's this is a bat. picture of the bat that you're working on right now, correct? Yep, the bat. And I'm planning to fan that whole bat on there. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, now we'll, uh, uh, Susie, how you doing, hon? Good, good. I'm, uh, I, um, I'm, I'm spinning some fine at the moment. I'll show you what I've got on my wheel. I'm spinning from uh, some top, which is a merino silk blend, and it's it's just beautiful. I, can um, see the I haven't had my sparrow quite as long as the other, so I haven't got big skeins, but I've done some samples. This is the first one I spun on this wheel, and what what struck me with the wheel first was there's absolutely no learning curve to it. I just picked it up and and spun this beautifully squishy pole with hand comb pole with. And then I've done another single. I'm doing some combing, color combing um, samples for some teaching I've got coming up. So this is one of them. So I spun that on it as well. And it's just a it's just a breeze. And it's quite a difference from if anyone's wondering, you know, yeah. can you do art yarns on this? That's why I've got the magpie. And I mean, this is fantastic, but this is not cafe material. Anyone that knows me um, knows I do a lot of cafe um, hopping. Um, so I really wanted something that I could take to the to the cafe with me or even in the car on trip. And um, this is just wonderful for it. Uh, not everyone knows I do also love to spin fine yarns. It's kind of like my relaxation spinning. So this is like my treat spin <laughs> on the oh, sparrow. No. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, and I'm using I'm using the make my um, uh, speed controller with it too. So, because nice. I had that. Yeah. yeah. I honestly think Magpie and Sparrow are an ultimate combination for home and Absolutely. for travel. Absolutely. You know, because you can travel with Magpie, but it, it's it's a production spinner. It's large. It's, it's fast. It's that's fun. like when I go away and I put it in its bag and all my stuff for, for a week. That's great. This is for like popping down to the river or, or out for a cup of coffee. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we'll move on. Let's see what Debbie's working on. Oh, I've got some Cheviot, 100% Cheviot, and I'm spinning a traditional three ply for socks. I've got this going at, I like to check my singles quite often, and it it's right at 56 reps per inch. And um, to my surprise, because I, I also have the magpie and I, I love it. And I think you really can spin. I could spin finer over there as well. And I have a bobbin that's got fine yarn on it as well. But I like the ability to also, you know, play around with all those semi draws and it's just easy. It's just fun. And I was surprised by there's even more responsiveness with the braid band than I, I was perfectly thrilled with the magpie, but I like here how instead of just, um, you know, having to undo your little tension here, you can also just push your, your, 
your bar out and in. And I mean, it's so easy. It's just, you can get any tension you're looking for. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it seems like it does. Do you have me muted? No. Oh, why does it say that? No, that's what's oh, recording my I'm laptop. sorry, I'm not very bright. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Magpie has the capability of doing fine yarns, but it's almost like it's a really, I say it's like mouse hunting with a shotgun, you know, like it's capable of so much more and so many different things that when it's time just to sit down and spin a lace single, like you said, you're at 56 wraps, which is deep into lace as far as really, really fine. Um, it's just perfect. It's, it's all the tool you need for that and without a lot of size or encumbrance. And uh, it's just easier to kind of fit around the house. Like I see you're working beside your laptop and uh, you know, whether you're on your coffee table, watching TV or an end table, or even on the recliner yourself to have something that's just small and fits in there nicely. It's a, uh, it's just friendly to work with. So, so yeah, so yeah, so it looks beautiful. Thanks. Uh, and Jillian Marino, is that a Rose Sparrow? It is. It's so pretty. What do you think of it so far, Jill? I love it. I want a little bit of sparkly. I'm considering um, uh, sticking a little jewel right here. She needs a little sparkle. But <laughs> also help me out with the sparkle. I'm spinning one of her gorgeous tops, which is um, Marino and Erie and um, Angelina. And yep. I love the Sparrow for um, luxury fibers. I usually fight a little bit with luxury fibers, but on the Sparrow, I've had no problem keeping it, you know, reasonably consistent with my woolen draw. And um, like, uh, was it Debbie? Uh, or was it Susie that said how easy it was to spin right away? Within the first oh, yeah. minute of turning it on and playing with it, I spun these two yarns out of the same fiber. So it's a little bit of Falkland. So super thin, super fat. This, you know, had to squeeze through the orifice on the ply, but um, it has this huge range and it's just a zippy, zippy little thing. You want me to show you what I like the best about it? Please. All right, I have to unplug it. You go. This is one of my knitting bags. It's just a little tote bag from Tom Bin. It has a whole sweater that I'm working on in it. Oh, but it also has my battery pack. And I can just put my Sparrow in here. I mean, it's small and it can go and I can take all my crafts in one bag. Nice. I love that the most about this. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy you showed that that control car or the card that you had the really thin and, and the really heavy yarn on. I saw that picture when you first posted on Instagram. And as a designer, <clears throat> I design a wheel to do a certain range of thing. And I put them out there and I know people are going to see what else it can do. Like, you know, take it to the extremes or take it to the limits, see, see what it's good at, see what it's not good at. Right. And so I'm so happy that you spun that, that heavy gauge. Like you say, that was about all that wanted to go through the orifice, but the, the wheel didn't have a problem with it with power or speed or tape. No, not at all. It pulled it right on. It, you know, it, it's woolen, so it has squish to it, but even if it had been worsted, it would have gone through just fine. I also love this for um, when I'm teaching and I'm excited to take it into the classroom in person because I can see that when um, newer spinners have trouble with learning something new by using hands and feet at the same time, it'll be wonderful to sit them with, uh, with this and just work on their hands. Right, right. That was some of the advice I got when I first learned to spin on a treadle wheel. The advice I got was don't touch any yarn, just treadle. Right. And and, and, and learn your cadence and get the rhythm. I call it the military march. And people who have been traveling for years and years, it's like they, they have this rhythm that they can do kind of subconsciously. And it takes a while to, to develop that. That is an obstacle for somebody who's wanting to learn. It's kind of like a, like a pat your head and rub your belly thing. You're, you're right. having to focus on two things. Right, if, let's uh, say if you're moving from, from being a worsted drafter to a woolen drafter, um, sometimes it's hard to remember to treadle and there are times I'll get down on the floor with people in person and treadle their wheel with my hands. 
<laughs> while they are working with drafting. Nice, nice. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you're loving Sparrow. Um, oh, awesome. Lo loving the work you're doing with it. Yeah, I think that wraps everybody up. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you are so mean. <laughs> I, I pick on James. James and I are close. And so uh, we, after the wives go to bed, we actually FaceTime each other. So I think it's pretty much a, like a level nine bromance going on here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a Bob and you've got, James. Oh, so I'm, I'll show you what I'm working on right now ah, before I drop it off of the side of the table. So <laughs> I'm just working on some bats at the moment. So these are some bats I carded for a weaving project. So some green. Um, and this is just merino, and I'm working at about uh, 40 wraps per inch. Uh, and just for reference, that's probably about 70 grams there. So to give you an idea of the kind of the capacity I'm fitting with these kind of, um, this kind of grist I'm spinning at the moment. So um, naturally, me being me, when I first got my sparrow, um, first thing I did was um, put it to full speed and see what it can do. How else do you get to know a new piece of kit, right? So um, I worked on this skein here, and this is the uh, Hema cotton, and it comes in at um, it's about 1,050 yards from 100 grams or three and a half ounces. Um, the singles were 80 wraps per inch, and this is about, um, oh, call it 60 wraps per inch, something like that as a two-ply. And let me tell you, this wheel just ate it. I was amazed. It just is like so smooth and so responsive. It was just instantly effortless to spin cotton on this wheel. It really was. Um, I think I have some pictures here. Let me share some of those so people can get a good view. Ah, yes. One of the, I think you have one of the cotton, don't you? I do. Your cotton is incredible. This is the finished skein. Wow, beautiful. That's, that's before it had its boil. This is now being boiled, but yeah. Lovely. Here is a finger for some size comparison. And we've got a lovely full bobbin here. So that was well, the singles right there. So not entirely full. So I'll show you what I'm working on now. So this is, I'm working on some, um, some Shetland Merino bats from uh, Felby Fibers. And I have um, seven skeins, it's 200 grams. And I'll show these to you just here so you can see the gorgeous gradient on them. Uh, and these are kind of my um, exercise of consistency. So it's seeing, you know, how consistent is it possible to get with this wheel? I mean, these are about 150 yards each. Um, and they weigh about 30 grams and they're all within 5% of each other, which just, you know, one of the things I love about um, electric spinning wheels is, you know, sometimes you're treadling, there isn't any speed variation as you're spinning. So if, so long as your drafting is really consistent, um, you can actually get very nearly the same twist per inch across the length of a bobbin, which is something I really like about these wheels. But overall, this, this wheel so far for me has just been effortless um, in the test it's had at the moment. And I mean, it just remains effortless. And I love it because I have, you know, I sit at my desk like I am now and I have my laptop in front of me and I just have my spinning wheel and I watch Netflix or something like that, or I, I Zoom or I, um, I'm just sat listening to music or something. And it's just so convenient. And this will absolutely be uh, my wheel for traveling. I love it for that kind of thing. And it's just so small, like stick it in a bag, you know. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed. So, so you did all that cotton, uh, were you at 100% the whole time for all that cotton yeah. spinning? Whole time, whole time. And you know what, there's something I was really um, amazed at was that this little, little motor in here, you know, you'd expect it to at least show some signs of being slightly unhappy for being run at like 2000 RPM for like four or five hours straight. This motor, let me tell you, I touched it and it was cool. Right. Like the sheer amount of power in this motor to be able to run at that, run a flyer at that kind of speed with a full bob and a yarn on it, you know, and to still remain cool. It's just such a powerful, it's like, 
small but deadly. You know, it's yeah. got all this power <laughs> crap, a tiny footprint. It's quite amazing. Right, that's my design thing is, I, I, you know, I design a certain size chassis, but for the motor, I always try to fit as much motor as I'm, I'm comfortable putting in it because it's, it's hard to have a motor that's too big for a certain job. And so like, like you say, even though it's a compact chassis and it's spinning 2000 RPM with a full bobbin, uh, it's still not a lot of work for the motor. The motor's actually capable of a lot more and I've kind of restrained it back to, to these capabilities. And so because of that, the motor temperatures seem to run really cool, really nice. That means you're gonna get a nice long lifetime out of it. And, uh, but it's, it's just a, a good, it's, 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 it's hard to abuse. I guess that's why I'm saying it. You can run at full speed, like you say, for four or five hours and there's no changes. So, all right. So, and no change in speed. Um, all right. Um, all right. So what we'll do is I got just some questions that I get a lot in email about Sparrow. And so I'm just going to kind of throw them out there and uh, maybe call on some of you guys randomly and, and, and see what you think. Um, the most common question I get is what weights of yarn can it spin? And so I'll say it's not an art yarn spinner. Obviously, it's a small spinner. It's got a small orifice. It's catered for higher speeds, but that doesn't mean it can only do lace. And so Jillian showed us that sample with the, uh, with the heavier yarn that you had spun. Um, I don't think, Susie, you haven't really pushed it heavy, have you? I, I haven't, but when talking about art yarns, I just, I just want to say with this wheel, you could spin a, a mini art yarn, something with texture and lots of plies because it's got the take up ability to do it. Um, so, I mean, you're limited by the orifice size like with with any wheel um, but that doesn't mean with this one that you couldn't actually get really adventurous and try lace weight uh, yarns which is on my list of things right in addition you could also use it as a lace weight ply to an art yarn like a thick and thin correct absolutely yep yep what about just applying because i, I know a, a lot of spinners they spin to supply their knitting or their crocheting a little bit with weavers but typically it's spinning to support their knitting or crocheting and typically you know knitters and crocheters they tend to work with a certain size or a certain gauge of yarn and so I wanted to make sure that Sparrow was kind of in that range to be able to ply reasonably the heaviest thing that a, that a knitter would possibly do and in my mind I think what's comfortable on it with the size of the orifice is going to be plying into maybe an air and weight and that was my design goal with it. I wanted to make sure it would fly into an air and weight ballpark and uh, not be encumbered, not get hot. And, uh, and then that way that would suit a whole lot of spinners. Uh, Evanita, what have you found with that? Have you uh, done any heavier plying on it? Hey, I showed you, I did one skein. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you, you could totally do some, some heavier plying. I mean, as long as it can fit through the orifice, I think any weight yarn as long as it can fit through there you can ply with it right so it's probably not ideal but it yeah. can do it yeah i mean yeah. And, uh i think james was planning on doing a sweater spin yeah um, yeah it's, it's in the um it's in the it's in the uh pipeline i'm planning to do like a, an aaron i guess an aaron weight sweater spin on this yeah, so that will like be aaron. like four, four kilo of singles that was Just, my figuring as well an aaron What's that, Debbie? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, no. I'm looking at the orifice. I'm thinking Aaron as well. I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to spin for that. Although I off, I guess my default is certainly a, a fine gauge, but definitely like for a sweater spin or anything. I mean, it looks. I would not hesitate to put that through here. Awesome. Yeah, because you you have a magpie as well. Is there, is there a point in gauge that you were applying that you would think, oh, I better break, I would rather break the magpie out for this? Um, I would say at this moment, at this point in my experience, no. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying having two spins going at the same time, uh, two different, for two, they're two different reasons. You know, I need them for two different things and no. I would take this out for anything but an art yarn, I think. It's right. really convenient. And I, I love, 
I, this is not exactly what we're talking about, but I was looking at it and I remember when I pulled it out of the box, I thought, um, is it missing an extra plug or an extra wire connection somehow? Because you know how if you want to take your e spinner out with you for wherever you're headed. It, I mean, for me, I usually leave something behind and it always upsets me. But this, you just need your, it's just this little, uh, your motor and it all connects somehow. And I thought that was just genius. But now I understand that that's because they are interconnectable. Interchangeable. Interchangeable. Yep. interchangeable. Yep. Yeah, see, I, I think the difference with, uh, with the larger wheels is that they're gonna have a larger motors and therefore more torque available. And so I think that the difference really is gonna come in like, and this is gonna kind of roll into my next question. Like, why would I choose a Starling or a Magpie over a Sparrow? And uh, one of the key things for me, at least as a designer and a spinner on these wheels, if, if you're a uh, fast ply, if when you ply, you are impatient and you want to try to get it done, you get your tension dialed in and keep turning your speed up, the, uh, the larger wheels with the larger motors and more torque are going to be able to operate, going to be able to ply at a higher speed. And so, uh, so that's why I say Magpie is, that's why I call it my production wheel, because it has the most power, the most torque uh, for the people who are the most skilled at high speed work. This, it, it's a large wheel that has the highest capabilities and they can actually use those. If you're not a speed demon, and uh, th that's where you, kind of, you can kind of fall back and get, and get away with Sparrow. The, uh, so my next question is like, so Starling, you know, I think uh, most of you have a Starling. Who, uh, Debbie's waiting on hers. All right, so, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, we've got a couple of Starlings out there. Uh, the, Starling being a little bit larger is designed for, and a little bit stronger is just going to take that idea of how heavy can it fly, how fast can it go, and just kind of extend that somewhat. So I call Starling kind of more the mid-range spinner. It's the do everything for the hobby spinner. Um, you know, heavier work, lighter work, uh, generous capacity. It's a uh, it's in the mid range, and then Magpie just takes it to the whole next level and takes it takes into production spinning. So Sparrow's still a hobby spinner, uh, and but the compromises you have between Sparrow and Starling is Sparrow's going to have a lot less capacity, five ounce bobbins instead of 12, 14 ounce bobbins, and uh, that's, that might not affect a lot of you. I, I get a lot of emails from people say, "Well, I only put one skein on a bobbin, so I don't care." Well, I built Sparrow. But now I've got other people that say, I want to get the whole sweater on that one bobbin. And that's where you have to go on up in, into the larger wheels. So capacity, speed, and torque, um, all of it's just kind of taking a step down with Sparrow. But like I say, I still think that it kind of, uh, kind of fits for everybody. Um, long draw. Of course, I'm, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are familiar with the technique. If you're not, it's a, it's a drafting style. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can draft your fiber in, and uh, and long draw is one that can uh, can generate. It, it can draft very very fast. Uh, short forward, they call it inch worming, and you get to a point in short forward that it's hard to actually feed the wheel. Long draw can uh, can generate a lot of yarn for the wheel to twist and, and and get on, and so that's why that's why James runs at such a high speed. I think if if I may, James, is because yeah. of your drafting technique and uh, with long draw. And so how, what's been your, your experience? You've, you've long drawn on Magpie, Starling and Sparrow, right? Yep, yep. So I would say, um, obviously the biggest thing is the speed. So um, obviously Magpie is the fastest out of the three. Um, so if you, really want, if you really want to start pushing things, then Magpie is the way to go. Um, now Starling, I guess, um, Starling is still comfortable. Obviously, it's probably uh, where Magpie would be at about 80%, I guess, wouldn't it? So it's not quite as fast. I mean, across the three wheels, I guess my experience with it is quite is quite similar. It's more about how far do you want to push things, obviously. Um, either way, you're going to get smooth take of the things. I mean, I think the Sparrow, I prefer it for long drawing finer stuff just because the assembly is slightly smaller and with that aerodynamic coupling you've got on the um, flyer, it just makes spinning the fine yarns um, using that garter technique slightly easier. 
Um, not to say you can't do it on a Magpire or Starling, I just find that the Sparrow feels optimized for it. Um, I've, you know, I've spun cotton still on Magpie, but it wasn't quite as effortless as I think it was on Sparrow. But, you know, for in terms of long draw, like I don't think you can go wrong with any of the rules, really. But, yeah, it's a speed thing more than anything, I guess. And so, and so at those high speeds, uh -huh. trying to get your tension set up so that it's still very, very light. Um, that's the trick as a designer, as the engineer. And what's, I, I know all my wheels can spin very, very light, but you've kind of pushed all three to the limit. What, what would be, what would be, do you have any comments on highest speed, lightest take up, which would be your cotton spinning, your short staples, can you tell a difference between Sparrow and Starling or Sparrow and Magpie? Um, yes. Yes. Um, I, I can definitely tell a difference between Sparrow and Starling. And I'll explain that. I mentioned just now aerodynamic coupling, um, which is um, a feature of your wheels I really, really like. And of course, that means, obviously, I mean, I don't know. I can explain it or you can, but I guess... Um, the principle means that you can get very light take up more easily. Um, so with the Sparrow, it has more aerodynamic coupling, obviously, than the Starling. So that means you can get the take up lighter. So at the highest speeds, I find um, that actually for light take up, the Sparrow is slightly better at it than the Starling. Not so you can't still spin really fine yarn. I have spun with, you know, 80, 90, 100 gram per inch singles on Starling. But I felt that for, for getting that real, real like feather light take up, I could probably take the Sparrows to light and fine. Um, in terms of Magpie and Sparrow, again, it's just to do with the size of the flyer assembly. I could still get a nice light take up on, on Magpie and I could still spin down to, you know, 80 wraps per inch without an issue. Um, but I think just the Sparrow is gonna is gonna be that little bit lighter just because the assembly is smaller and slightly um, and the coupling is, is greater, I guess. Okay, um, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, what James is referencing, the aerodynamic coupling, it's a feature where I try to, the flyer has got to move air as it spins and I try to use that air in our benefit. And so I try to channel the air coming off the arms of the flyer into the bobbin pattern and what that does is we so we call it coupling. And so it helps blow the bobbin along and speed the bobbin up and get closer to the flyer speed. For super high speed and super light take up, the bobbin has to be moving very close to the flyer RPM. And so aerodynamic coupling is something I do in all my wheels, but with Sparrow, I, I gave it like an extra heaping dose of it. And I really, really tried to concentrate on that because I knew it was going to cater towards lace and light spinning. And I'm glad to hear that it seems like it, it's actually manifested to where you can actually feel it. That at oh. high speed and light take up, you can still dial in those real, real fine amounts of take up that you need for, for the, the cotton and, or any short staple, any high speed type fiber. All right. Um, thank you, James. Um, another question I get, I, I get questions from beginners that have never spun or hardly spun, and then I get questions from advanced spinners that have tried every wheel on the market. They know what they <laughs> like, they know what they don't like. Um, maybe, uh, I know uh, Jillian had commented about that it's easy for beginners and that, that e-spinners in general, and that you use them in your classes. What, uh, can you see can you see the sparrow being a tool that a beginner could use as they progress? Like, would they ever outgrow it? Uh, it depends on what kind of yarn that they want. Once they become the spinner that knows, you know, I want exactly this kind of yarn. If they decide that they want to become an art yarn spinner or they want to spin very, very fat yarn, um, then clearly they'd need to buy a magpie. Uh, but they, can, they could absolutely, you know, do sweater spins on this. So socks, sweaters, uh, low twist singles. That's something else that I've done on the Sparrow. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think a beginner or just off a beginner could, could use a Sparrow and, and um, get it and be happy with it for a really long time. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, thank you. Uh, anyone else? I'll just kind of throw this up to the group. 
uh, Debbie, Susie, Evanita, is there anything, everyone but James, is there anyone that, uh, is there anything that you see as far as what would make it good for a beginner or, uh, or how you could see it, it being good as a person advanced in their spinning? Do you have any comments on that? Is it easy to learn on? Was it easy to spin on out of the box? Um, I'll comment. So it's, it's definitely super easy out of the box. You know, you, you get it and it, it's so smooth and easy to work with. I mean, all you're really adjusting is your, your tension and your speed. And so those two factors, you know, once you get them dialed into what works for you makes it super smooth. And the fact that it's, um, it's priced at a point that is more accessible to new spinners. And yet it's something that um, they're not going to outgrow for, you know, it, as long as it, it's within the range of the spin that they want to do, they're not going to outgrow it. Right. All right. Let's talk about price for a second since we brought that up. I have another chart. Let me just take one second and pull it up for you guys. This is a price comparison chart. We get a lot of questions about how much the wheel costs in different countries. So yeah, so this is actually the retail prices across for uh, US dollars, Canadian dollars, Great British pounds, and Australian dollars. And these are just conversions based on the exchange rate that's going on today. You have to keep in mind that in foreign countries, they're gonna charge you import duties, customs, tariffs, all different types of words for them kind of gouging you out of a little bit of money. All of the EU was a uh, 20%. Canada, after we went through, uh, NAFTA was disbanded, Canada has gone back up, and now they're at 20% import fees. I think Great Britain is 20% also. Yeah, now that the Brexit, I mean, I think they're still at 20%, and Australia's the same way, isn't it? I believe it's I 20%, 20 as well. Uh, if you order a battery, a lot of times your customs, we have to label it, but it's a, it's a battery going in, and your customs will see that, and sometimes they'll put like a hazardous materials charge, or some extra 5% or something on it. And so be wary with that too. With the Please batteries. don't quote us on the 5%. I am not sure exactly what the upcharge is for lithium ion batteries. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing at all these, every country is different actually. And, uh, and we know the ones that we work with that uh, I think we're in 20 countries. We are in 20 countries right now. Yeah, in 20, soon to be 21. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> So I hope that kind of helps explain things about the tariffs and about what the costs. Um, yeah. it, it's, right. I thought it was going to be more. I was surprised to see that price. I mean, it, it is a, a range that it's not certainly, especially in these times. I mean, that, you know, four or five hundred dollars. It's a lot of money. But for for this, I mean, I really thought it was going to be more than that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I really designed it, even though, you know, I cut corners, I, I didn't cut any corners. All I did was just scale everything down so it prints a lot faster. And I made some details that it would kind of assemble faster for me. And that's like my investment into the product. And so for me to be able to minimize those, I was able to get it out at a, at a cheaper price point. But I still, I, I wouldn't have gone public with it if I didn't think it was a forever tool if I thought it was fallible. Like I really built these things to last, just like all the rest of my wheels. None of those corners were cut. And uh, so, I mean, it still has an all metal yarn path. You know, you don't have to worry about yarn sawing through a, a shoulder of a flyer or, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's still heavy duty and great for heavy work. It's just small. So uh, it even oh, it's really stable. We haven't talked about mm -hmm. how stable it is. <laughs> when I long draw on it or spin woolen or am just feisty and tug, it doesn't, um, you know, slide toward me. So it has enough weight that it doesn't tip when I spin or, and it does um, or slide across the table. I mean, I've been spinning this whole time and it hasn't, and it hasn't slid. Yeah. And not even so much as a vibration. Uh, yeah. It's, it's incredible. I mean, not even a, what a, it just even when you rev it all the way up. I mean, I would really think it would shake or something, but no, it's perfectly stable. Yeah, they, uh, the design that I use with the 3D printed flyers, and 
and actually weigh the carbon fiber flyer arms to try to match them in a pair to try to get. So out of the box, it's as good as I can get it as far as the balance goes. Um, it may not be flawless, but it's very, very close. Um, as you add yarn onto the bobbin, it usually will pack on pretty balanced, but there are cases with a full bobbin where you'll actually have a bobbin imbalance. So the yarn load itself is a little imbalanced, but there are still design features in Sparrow, just like my other wheels that have vibration dampening characteristics to try to yep. keep the head from the vibrations from going the head down through the chassis and into your coffee table or it wanting to walk around or sketch around. A pound and a half isn't very heavy. But in combination with the rubber feet that I use, it seems like it doesn't want to walk, it doesn't want to slide. It's as small as it can be, but yet still be a, a, a serious and honest tool to use. And it's cute. It's so it's adorable. <laughs> I love the. I've also got. Flyer. I've also got mine sitting sitting on the battery here too. By the way, it fits perfectly on top of the battery. So if you've got like a small footprint, like in a cafe, and there's a small table. It's quite compact and honestly, it hasn't moved at all sitting on top of the battery. It's perfectly stable and it's, I find that quite a nice compact little way to use it. Right, right. All right, so I get a question, um, you know, to wrap this up, why would I buy Sparrow instead of the other wheels? I kind of covered why would I buy a Starling or a Magpie instead of a Sparrow, but why would I want Sparrow instead of the others? Um, things that people come to me with obviously what we're just talking about travel if it's uh down to the cafe uh say you've got a your a doctor's appointment or you know you're going to have a long wait in line uh, or, or in an office or in your car somewhere um it's easy to take with you just the size of it makes it really easy to travel with um the uh why would you want Sparrow over the others? Like James was saying, it has just an edge on the absolute lightest gauge ability over Starling and over Magpie. So if you were a cobweb, gossamer style spinner, you wanna see how thin you can go, Sparrow would probably be the best option out of the three for you. Um, and uh, the other thing that would you'd have to be okay with in order to, to be okay with a Sparrow is the limited bobbin capacity. If you're the type that says, hey, a skein on a bobbin is all I want, then this is perfect for you. So, you know, otherwise you're working with multiple bobbins on a project and, uh, and if you're okay with that, then, then I am too. Also, the other limiting factor when you say, you know, should I buy a Sparrow? Are you okay with the limit as far as how heavy or how fast it can ply? Um, if you think you're going to want to apply heavier yarns, uh, you know, into the like finger finger size, like the size of my pinky or so, I don't know if we're calling that a chunky bulky, fly, bulky, bulky and yeah, bulky and jumbo. If you're wanting to get into that range, that's where you should go up to a sparrow or even a magpie. I mean, starling. I'm sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> thank you. I got the to the S's are messing with me, but that's when you should step up. Um, so if you're okay with spinning that medium gauge, which I'm going to say, which is around an Aaron or a little bit heavier ply. Uh, and down, then Sparrow is going to suit your bill just fine. So, uh, all right. All right. The next big question we have been getting. Yeah. If I do not get a Sparrow in this batch, and I will <laughs> warn people right now, we have 30 wheels. We have one of each color. The choice was do limited colors with multiple of the limited colors or have a large variety and have one of each. We chose large variety with one of each. This will cause a problem. There is no way for me to stop it. People will get wheels sniped out from underneath them. I am sorry. Yeah. However, we will have another batch very soon. Yeah, Yay. hopefully. I, I'm trying to balance you know, my workload with the orders because this week I'm picking back up on Starlings, Starling and Magpie orders that have been custom ordered. And uh, I'm trying to balance my workload out so the, my best guess is the next batch of starlings might hit the market somewhere between 30 and 45 days, four to six weeks. That's my goal. Uh, we'll see how workflow goes and how feedback on this batch goes. And I'm just kind of living it day by day. But uh, that's my best guess is about 30 to 45 days. Because uh, we've already seen in groups and, and threads and comments and Instagram, people are already kind of picking their favorite ones from the, from the, uh, the pictures that we put out there. I would highly, we've already got the accessories live on the website. So I would highly recommend if you have your heart set on one specific wheel that you've seen, 
I would highly recommend getting on the website early, which is going to be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when the sparrows go live. I would get online a, a little bit before that and go ahead, if you want accessories, go ahead and get those in your cart. And that way at nine o'clock, you can simply choose the wheel that you want and check out. And once you've checked out, that wheel is out of stock. So the wheels will be listed under three categories for ease of finding them. If you are looking for a colored wheel with black trim, they will all be under one listing. All black wheels with colored trim will be on another listing. And for those of you looking for our lovely Lord of the Rings collection, notice the tie off knob that signifies Lord of the Rings collection, um, they will be under a, a heading of their own as well. Yep. And so you should, you should be able to find whatever wheel you're looking for under one of those three categories. Just choose it, put it in your basket and check out as quick as you can. We expect there to be a large influx of sales on these 30 at the minute that they go live. Um, and so if you had your heart set on a specific one, it might get sold out from underneath you, but I don't know how long it'll take for the rest of them to sell out. Um, we'll, we'll know tonight. Um, will there be extra bobbins? Yeah, we do have a limited number of extra bobbin sets as the accessories that you can order. Um, we have 30 wheels available. We have 22 speed controllers available. However, if those run out, message me. We will have time to make some extras. It may just delay shipping by a day or two. Uh, we have 17 sets of three packs. So 17 lucky people can get extra bobbins. And then after that, they'll have to be back ordered or they would, they would go out in uh, two to three weeks. We wish that we could have had 30 extra sets of bobbins and 30 extra speed controllers. But unfortunately, time constraints, you know, we are only able to, to get as many done as we're only able to get done because it's just David and I. Yeah, right. Were you talking about that? Ah, uh, yes. So the next batch will come out in four to six weeks. My goal is to have 20 to 30. I don't know the exact number yet. Um, the next theme, because, okay, every a batch we are going to do colors with black, black with colors, and then one special limited edition set. We did Lord of the Rings this time. For batch number two, we're going to do Greek God inspired wheels. Ooh. For the Lord of the Rings, what we did to signify them specifically as Lord of the Rings was we put the gold tie-off knob, which signifies the ring, and then on the bottom, next to the serial number, it actually says the name of the person or the group of people that this wheel was inspired by. This is the Arwen wheel. For the Greek gods, the idea is a clear tie-off knob with a silver infinity symbol because gods are infinite. I have a Zeus wheel, a Poseidon wheel, a Hades wheel. Uh, I, I could continue to list. We have about a dozen listed. Yeah. So we're going to stick with the specialty theme, you know, for a handful of wheels on every batch and kind of see how that goes. It's generating some unique color combinations and choices. And, and they are just kind of one-offs at this point. So I guess that's interesting with them too. So uh, yeah, we got some fun stuff in store. Um, you know, I, I think I'd like to open it up to some final thoughts from our panel. Um, Jillian, is, are, do you have any final thoughts about the Sparrow? What people might want to know? Any special trips, sorry, tips or tricks that you might have? Um, it's a great wheel. It's a great all around wheel, as long as you don't want to go fat or art. It's fabulous for merino and um, luxury fibers. I haven't spun cotton on it yet, but that's on my list. Um, and it's a great wheel for a beginner and for anybody that travels or likes to lounge while they spin. I put mine on the arm of the couch while I watch TV. So you can get into a lot of configurations physically while, while spinning on a sparrow. Awesome. Thank you. Debbie, what about you? Any thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking of one, but I can't say that. I, I, had, I had a little issue with where my motor was placed. So I had tried uh, double lacing, or 
get double lacing or just to get even the finer yarn. But the thing is, I stuck, I uncrossed because really for the first time using an e-spinner, I'm having absolutely no trouble without having to angle or sit next to it or anything that I usually do on an e-spinner or a treadle wheel. This, this e-spinner, I mean, it, it's ideal if you want to learn how to spin a cobweb or a lace weight. It's just, it's so easy. So I guess that's my last, my final thought is that, yeah, if you're interested in a finer spin and like Jillian said, a spinner you can take anywhere and it's still, it's still pretty hardy, you know? Um, I'm really impressed. I love it. Awesome. Thank you. That's what I thought. Um, the customer service is oh. outstanding um, with you guys. Uh, I had not with this one, but uh, when my start, no, when my magpie came, I had some issues and you had answers and um, helped me fix it and get it going within 24 hours. You absolutely know how much we want to spin and you are invested in everybody being happy with their wheels. So you're, I'd like to just shout out, shout out sure. for your customer service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We and really you both spin. I mean, you're making a wheel that you will use, that you do use, and that that makes a big difference to us. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you for that. We uh, being a small shop, you know, it's 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 hard to answer. It's hard to answer every email and every question, but yet somehow we do. We do. Uh, we try to uh, not just people who who are interested in making a purchase, but after the sale. We, we try to contact people and make sure that they don't have any questions, that, uh, that they're comfortable with the way everything's operating. And if there is any type of uh, issue, whether we've had some get damaged in shipping and, and some other little things, they all get tested before they leave. And so normally all problems kind of get whittled out here before they get boxed, but no telling what happens during shipping. But uh, yeah, if you spend money and you get your product and you're not 100% happy with it, I, I can relate. Like, I understand what that's like. So I'm definitely gonna be on the phone with you and trying to work it out the best way that we can. I'd like to say that I, I can't think of an unhappy customer. Like, uh, it seems like no matter what we've done, all the wheels we've sold, all the customer communications, it seems like everything's been resolved. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I have to like, agree I, There wasn't that. anybody I had to give up on or just go, I'm sorry. Or, you know, I mean, it's, you know, we, we, we worked it out with absolutely everybody because I, I really do. I, you know, I want you to be happy with your purchase. It, you know, if for some reason you're not happy with your purchase, um, you should definitely contact me. But like I say, it's uh, we, we've had really, really good response from the community. And I, I appreciate that acknowledgement. Um, Susie, what uh, any final words like so, you know, you got you. I know you said you got it out of the box and turned it on and it was just perfect. So Super it, easy. I, I just I just want to second Jillian on the customer service and responsiveness of you guys as well. I I really feel looked after with everything, even though I, you know it was just perfect straight off. Um, I would also like to say if, if there's anyone like me, I, I do a lot of computer work, getting the magazine ready. Um, and what I've been enjoying about the wheel is that I don't need to have to put it away and clear my desk. Um, I can just leave it. Like right next to me so if I get stuck on something or I need a break I can just like literally turn around and spin for it, even two minutes and um, and it's just there and, and um, gives me a little break from staring at the screen so uh, that's for me one of the really nice things about having a wheel this size too so I just wanted to add that it's, it's like my sneaky spin <laughs> thank you thank you that's what I was going after with it was you know like a like a friend i always said I, I want them to be good roommates all of my wheels you know you have you have the roommate that like plays the music really loud and like uses all the hot water before you get in the shower i i tried to make sure that, uh, that all my wheels are good roommates so that they're quiet they're not in your face that it, they don't bother other people when, when you're spinning on them um i want the whole family to love the wheel not just the owner so uh so yeah so thank you for that um would you say any last words, Evanita, James? I don't know. Um, I absolutely love this wheel. And I, I swear they're like potato chips because um, I have three. <laughs> 
But I, I like the fact that I, I'm spinning cotton, like my first cotton project, and I've got like 60 grams on here, and it's just effortless. I, I would not imagine spinning this much cotton um, and enjoying it this much. That's awesome, because I, I know you're a very accomplished spinner. And so to be able to admit, like, you know, I've struggled with cotton for these yeah. reasons, and yet Sparrow I seems to kind of allow me to do it. This is more cotton than I've, I've ever spun, like put all together. Like I've done a little bit of samples on different spindles, different wheels, and it was okay, but not really truly enjoyable. And this is just, I, I, I can't stop spinning it. <laughs> Got a verified addict. Thank you, Evanita. Um, James, we'll let you wrap it up, brother. Cool. Um... Yeah, so I mean, you know what? I'll be I'll be perfectly honest with you. I I wasn't sure how much I was going to like this this sparrow when it arrived. I mean, I'm, obviously I know it's your engineering, and I stand behind your engineering completely. But I just thought, okay, it's going to be like a small travel wheel, and you know what? This has floored me. Um, I've been amazed with how it has performed for a wheel of its size. Um, what I've been able to do on it, it just I absolutely love it, and like Susie, I keep mine on my desk all the time. Like it's constantly next to my laptop. So when I'm working and writing or whatever I'm doing, um, it's just there so I can spin whenever I want. want. Um, and I've just been overjoyed with it. Like I couldn't recommend it more. All your engineering will like, at least, I mean, I can only echo what everyone else has said customer service wise. Like you've always been awesome with that. And I know you have. And like, just from a, a slightly different perspective, you know, when, when, you know, when you when we you, we test stuff for you, and you and me have had discussions about what works, what doesn't work. Like the one thing I've always I have to say is you listen, and you actually listen, and you do things to understand and actually address the points I'm raising, not just like well it is what it is. It's so I can't fault I cannot fault you for the way you design products because you also understand how it should be and how we want it to feel. And you've always been really good at listening to what the tester is saying. So, which is, which, which just like is testament to how brilliant these wheels are, so. Oh, thank you. That, that means a lot too, coming from you. I know you've got a highly modified Magpie that we've worked with on some, on some ultra speed tests. And yeah. so you've got that like sitting 20 feet from you, but yet you still find reasons on why, why uh, you know, I want to spin on the Starling. I don't want to drag the Magpie out, the, the, the Sparrow rather, is the wheel that I want to spin on today. And so I, I like that. I like the fact that you've got the high-end production wheel, but yet you can still find excuses for why Sparrow is so nice to spin on. Yeah, completely. So, yeah, so that's great. Um, okay, so any, uh, any last comments from the wife? Um, I'd like to say good luck to everybody trying to get a Sparrow. Um, I would like to say things happen in shipping. If you have any problems, please contact us. We will fix it. And before you start spinning, when you take it out of the box, the first thing to look at is your motor alignment to make sure it did not get knocked in shipping. It want, you want it to be parallel, the pinion and the actual top of the flyer where the band goes across. You want everything to be parallel. Yeah, all of that's covered. It, it, the sparrows come with documentation. It's two pages. Read it, and you'll be an, a sparrow expert. And if that's not good enough, we actually, or you'd rather just watch videos. I actually prefer watching videos now rather than having to read old school. Um, and so we've got a, a QR code and links to our YouTube series of videos on sparrow. And they're they're short videos, so they're like single serving size, and they teach you how to verify the alignments of everything after shipping, how to get the tension set up, how to thread your yarn, and how to get started on the speed control. Between the paperwork and the videos, if you watch it, you'll be as much of an expert on Sparrow as I am. I mean, they're fully comprehensive. So I highly uh, advise checking that stuff out when you, when you receive it. And like I say, let's just hope everything goes well. I have no idea how long it's gonna take for all these to sell out. And uh, the next batch is coming in four to six weeks. And uh, Thank you all so much for joining me. To, to, my, to my viewers, the group of people that you're looking at here are creme de la creme. To me, you know, I'm just smart enough in spinning to understand when people are really, really capable and really knowledgeable in the subject. 
And so I find these people and I listen to them. And these are the people that I found here and that I brought together today to try to help me design these wheels and make them a better product for everybody. So thank you all for being so good at what you do and how you do it, all of you. And, uh, and thank you viewers of this video. Thank you for tuning in and being interested in Daedalus and Sparrow and all things fiber. All right. All right. So thank you very much and good luck tonight. May the fastest clicker win. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you.